the metal par particles there are, he says more than 200. If you ask a Dogen, Dogen priest, he says 266. Science is on the verge of understanding things that ancient civilizations seemed to know long ago. How is this possible? The excitement builds for the real destination of the expedition, the ancient site of Napta Playa. Here we have this, this bunch of huge megaliths that were dragged from God knows where and placed in, in, in a pattern, uh, a sort of center point of the whole area. It's essential that we do not disturb the stones, we don't touch anything, we just look at them. Because the alignments are there and they've been there for thousands of years, undisturbed, and we can use them to date this place. A group of archaeologists led by Fred Wendorf called the Combined Prehistoric Expedition, by chance found some pottery shards at Napta Playa. They thought that the megaliths were just outcrops of rock. And then they started to realize, well, these are setting on top of Playa sediments, you know, sediments that were built up during the Neolithic time. Uh, and so how did they get there? And so they, they had to get there from map. These were man-made objects, these megaliths. One of the possible links to Egypt before the pharaohs is that Napta Playa became climatically hyper-arid like it is today, around 3800 BC. It has not been lived at or used since. It has been assumed by historians that Egypt borrowed its complex society from Mesopotamia. However, it is now generally recognized that a process of social complexity is not diffused from one location to another, but rather develops locally. Thirty four hundred BC is when you see uh, pre dynastic cultures building up on the Nile Valley, just a hundred kilometers east of Napta Playa. If that's the case, then a lot of the great dynastic Egyptian stuff we're all familiar with had some aspect of origin in the Napta Playa people's cultural development. Dr. Nicole Dueck is an Egyptologist who lectures at the British Museum and at the Metropolitan Museum in New York. By strange coincidence, she happened to be at Napta Playa on the same day as our team. From what I understand from her, she also believes that this could be the source of Egyptian civilization. This is just amazing. I've wanted to come here since the first publications came out. Uh, what are the odds of meeting on the same day? None. Exactly. The coincidences for me are astonishing. I mean, last year, the same people, we went to Gilf Kebir and the Wenat. We spent two days roaming around Karkortal and looking at the graffiti and, you know, all the bovids and the cattle and the people moving around with their animals, and it's the same dates as here. These people had what today we'd call a calendar. Uh, they, 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 they used the position of the sun to mark the, the specific days of the year, and the, the main stations of the year, of course, are the summer sources, the winter sources, and the two equinoxes. No doubt, they tracked the sun through the year, and therefore they had a calendar. This structure may not appear significant above ground, Looking beneath the surface reveals an enigma. These complex structures are the most enigmatic remaining aspects of Napta Playa. When they excavated the central one, the largest one, underneath the surface, 
down in the playa sediments. The playa sediments are about 10 feet deep. They found this megalithic sculpture. Some people call it the cow stone. Uh, it has perhaps a vague resemblance to a cow, but it also seems maybe to have an astronomical meaning because it's in this astronomical complex. And then underneath the scope of the stone, on the bedrock, underneath all the sediments that were laid down earlier, they found another sculpture, sculpted out of the living bedrock, and sort of like the Sphinx is sculpted out of the bedrock. The bedrock sculpture was carved and sediment filled it in over thousands of years. Then the cow stone was carved and placed there, and then sediment filled it in again. We are looking at three subsurface layers of sediment. This is a clue to the extreme age of Naptoplaya. What makes all this far more exciting is that they also align to stars. And that's a, a, a totally different ball game here because aligning to stars means that they track the seasons. The climatic conditions were very important to them. That was the beginning of the monsoons, and therefore the stars would be the signal to them that the monsoons had started. Uh, they would start migrating here, and they would arrive here when the water, the monsoons, the rainfalls had filled the lakes. It was essential that they get here when the lakes have water. It would have been a fatal mistake had they come here 20 or 30 days before the event. From the central complex radiates three series of lines, uh, east and a series of lines north. Mm -hmm. right. According to Wendorf and, uh, and, and the checkups by Brophy, we've got alignments to the, to the rising of certain stars yes. here yes. and here. A double alignment of blocks, 250 meters long, points to the brightest stars in the belt of Orion. The second line points to the rising position of Sirius. Another long line of stones aligns to the brightest star of the Big Dipper, which later Egyptians represented as a cow thigh or leg. The stele faced the circumpolar region of the heavens, which the pyramid text describe as a place where the stars never die. They've got uh, Orion's belt and Sirius. What's interesting is that they seem to be tracking them, not just aligning two, but they seem to be tracking them over the movement over a long period of time. So they knew the stars moved, and they knew that the sun moved the same every year on an annual cycle. Maybe the whole ceremonial complex has something to do with the age of Gemini and transition to the age of Taurus. The constellation of Taurus is represented by a bull. If we are talking about the transition to the age of Taurus, was the symbolism of cows in ancient Egypt connected to the nomadic cattle cults prevalent in the area? So astronomy is telling us that there's a link. Now we need the anthropologists and the Egyptologists to find that link. The problem is that most of these disciplines are so entrenched in their own little world that it's very difficult to move people one side or the other. And I mean, I don't know how it is in the United States, but in Britain, everyone is in his own little world and people who deal with text won't talk to people who deal with sites in the same discipline. It's becoming more than obvious now. I think it is. That there are... There are connections. connections. Of course there are. And they're very, very important connections because there are no other answers, for the moment anyway. And this is as good as any. Yeah. Better. <laughs>